Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to thank you guys for stopping by and checking these videos out from us. Uh, also, you can follow me on social media if you like the content on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, also, give me a quick like and subscribe. It helps these videos reach a broader audience and it can help a lot more people. It's free, it's easy to do, but it really helps me out and I really appreciate that. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video and we'll see you on the next one. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I want to talk today about what Hobie claims is the best-selling fishing pedal drive kayak in the world. And what we're talking about here is the Hobie Outback. So the Hobie Outback, according to Hobie, is the number one selling pedal drive kayak. Now, a lot of I know a lot of old town guys are going to come in saying the the the, the old town sportsman pedal drive. Is that a good kayak? Absolutely. Do they sell a lot of those? 100%. You know, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's units or if it's revenue or both. Again, I can't really speak to that. What I can speak to is Hobie, in my opinion, again, it's just me talking here. It's the best all around kayak in the Hobie lineup. Now, me personally, I rock a 14 foot uh, pro angler in that new sunset camo, which you see there against the wall. That is the outback in 2023. That's a new color, but this here, uh, papaya again, I like it because it gives you stability. It gives you a really great calm flat water kayak, uh, to fish from, but it's also going to be really good for moving water for slow moving rivers. Again, it's not a whitewater kayak. So again, kind of be careful on what kind of rivers you're taking something like that on. Um, you can pop the drive out. You can put the cassette down in there, which comes with the kayak. You've got a decent paddling kayak also. So if you are going to go on some moving water and some really narrow and shallow rivers, again, this one is not like paddling a pro angler. You kind of get in a little bit more of a, maybe a little bit more versatile kayak, in my opinion, than the pro angler series. So what comes with it? You do, like I said, you do have the cassette, which you see down there. You can plug that right into there if you didn't want to run the, the drive on it. These also come with these really nifty, uh, you can put, you can see the, the hooks here. You can put around the, the H bar for the back handle. And what this does is if you're storing it, it allows that rudder to sit really nicely in there and it keeps the rudder off the ground. So it's deployed, of course, but it kicks up. But if you've got it flat on the ground, having that, it just it's just kind of nice. It allows you to store it a little safer. Uh, and again, you've got a pretty good investment in these kayaks, so you want to protect them properly. The one thing I would say about this kayak that I'm not the biggest fan of is this little T-handle here. So is it comfortable on the hands? Absolutely. But it, could they maybe have done um, maybe something like the Pro Angler here where it's got the integrated kind of rubberized comfort grip handles? I would like to see them do that. Maybe do a handle across that's a little bit easier on the hands because the kayak itself weighs 103 pounds. Now, it's got a 425-pound weight capacity that is paddler plus gear. Um, but when you get... A heavier kayak, your T handles can give you a little bit of what I call the pendulum effect. They'll kind of swing a little bit and it can make it feel a little bit heavier than it actually is, in my opinion. But uh, not a deal breaker on this kayak. I would just like to see maybe a little bit more of a solid handle. The T handles will work, of course, on the compass, on the revolution, on the passports, on the outback. I just I would like to see them go with a little bit more of a solid handle. Uh, again, the front hatch here, you do also. It comes with included fish finder mount gear. Uh, a lot of this is for, they come low rants ready. 
So if you got that low rants uh, transducer and fish finder set up, this comes out of the box ready. And then they come with a lot of these extra parts for your through hole wiring, which you do have grommets uh, in here as well, and your transducer scooper. So if you're running that, uh, that reveal seven with the triple shot, it's got that long, thin transducer. That scoop kind of comes in front of it and allows it to be protected if it's underneath there. Uh, flush mount rod holders installed on the front and the back, which is really nice. Um, you've got the, your, your pull cords here are going to be for two things. You have your rudder, which deploys your rudder up and down, and then you have your transducer. So these have that guardian plate underneath it where you can retract your transducer up and down. So if you're launching, having it, having it up. And then also when it's down, if you hit something, that allows that transducer to kind of springboard up. Um, I'm installing the triple set, uh, the, the, the triple shot reveal seven from low rents on my pro angler. I'll do a video explaining a little bit more about that guardian system, but just know that it is on the outback. Uh, moving up here, this is one of my favorite parts about this kayak. So this is the first kayak, uh, again, going from, uh, least expensive to most expensive. This is the first when you start to see the H-Rail system. So this is Hobie's own mounting system. Uh, their, uh, their accessory mounts are a clamp on, uh, but what you get is you get the H-Rail and you also get T-Track running across the top of that. You also get an integrated uh, gear track here as well. This gives you the best of both worlds. This is something I actually wish, wish that, uh, that the Pro Angler did. Now, not having that on top of the H bar on the Pro Angler, it does make for a more solid, uh, you know, a little bit more of a sturdy rail. But honestly, I like the fact that I can run my Yak Attack stuff on the top of the rail on the Outback. Uh, and you have two of them here as well. You got gear track here, track here, and you can also run your, your H rail mounts. Uh, you got little cutouts here for your pliers, for your hooks. You also have these little retractable leashes here. So if you have, um, you know, pliers or forceps, you can tie them into that. You can keep them handy because guys, let me tell you, when you got a fish on and you're bringing them in the boat, you're getting ready to put them on the catch board to take your, take your photo, submit it. The last thing you want to do when you've got a fish on the other end is fumbling around looking for your pliers and they're all in the, they're on the front of the bottom of the deck here and it just, Again, having those retractable leashes really, really helps uh, kind of make that a lot smoother, a lot more efficient. Same thing on the other side. You do have uh, on both sides these little rubberized pockets. Those are good for extra small storage, plastics, anything like that. You do have a nice little hatch. It's a turnkey, so you just turn it and open. Again, another little rubberized. These are snag-free also. So you don't have to worry about getting your, your hooks caught in that. Uh, this little tub removes if you want to store stuff inside the hull. This is really good, again, for your soft plastics. You've also got some room underneath the seat there as well if you want to have some extra storage. The seat is really one of, to me, that's what separates a Hobie other than the drive is the seat. So the outback is when you start, you know, you could see you got a little bit more of the mesh style seat here. The outback and the Revolution 11 have a very similar seat to each other. The outback seat is a little bit wider than the Revolution, but it's got kind of that that padded mesh. It's got kind of that give, not quite memory foam, but it's got kind of that feel to it. It's very breathable. It's very, very comfortable. And it sits up a little bit higher, which I like being a taller guy. The molded in cup holders are probably one of my favorites in the whole industry because they are deep. So if you got that 30 ounce plus tumbler, that Yeti tumbler, it's going to fit down in there. You're not going to have to worry about that thing falling out too much. The drive on Hobies is really, that's why you buy a Hobie is for the fin drive. I love the 180 drive. I love to be able to go in reverse, but I like that it has a smaller footprint on the deck of the boat. Uh, so here you can see, and I know I'm comparing apples to oranges here, but you can see it's a very small footprint on the deck as opposed to a 360 drive. And this is kind of why I chose personally the 180 drive over the 360 is it doesn't take up as much of your deck. 
I like that smaller footprint. I like to stand up and fish. I like to have stuff on the deck of my boat. So you do get that. Again, you're getting a, a, a narrower kayak than a pro angler on this. So I like the fact that your drive doesn't take up your open space. You can still stand. You have stand-up pads here. Um, if you need to have stuff laying on your deck while you're out, because that happens, you've got the room to do that with. You also have some additional storage on the sides here as well. Moving to the back here, um, I wanted to show you a little bit under the seat. So I talked about that retractable uh, transducer mount. This plate here is where you've got this little cord tied to it. That's what pulls that transducer up and down. You've also got uh, through-hole wiring here. You've got these little rubber grommets. If you take that off, you can remove those, and you have those grommets in there that can go in there that, have, that, that are to your different size wiring. Uh, so that's a really good setup on there. Some people car top these. That's what these uh, handles are in here are for. It allows you to kind of grab a hold of both of those handles and kind of get it up over the car top. So again, not my favorite kayak to car top, but you can do that. You're still kind of in that 100 pound range. Obviously, if you take the seat and the drive off, you're dropping a little bit below that. But uh, the thing that I also love about the Albex is look how large that tank well is. That is probably that actually, so that's a 12 foot pro angler over there. This tank well in the back is bigger than a 12 foot pro angler. That is, uh, that's good for your, for your tackle crate setup, whether it's a black pack pro, you have additional bungee and tackle storage. You can buy a kit to install this on here so it's an h-rail kit that goes across here that gives you the same h-rail capabilities as you do on the front so if you ever wanted to upgrade that you can um but the tank well i just the when you're getting a fishing kayak your tank well capability is one of not the most important but it's up there uh because you're gonna this is where most of your gear is gonna sit your tackle uh management system maybe a battery uh you can cut out and put a round hatch there if you wanted access to, to the hole also you have your torpedo your power pole mount and also this h rail will assist in those brackets coming across there to do that stake pole or to do that uh, trolling motor back here Really simple setup here. This is for your rudder tension. So you can see if you wanted to, to do your, uh, you know, tighten them up. Because again, in cold and hot weather, it's plastic. So it's going to expand and contract. Sometimes your rudder cables can get a little loose. You just loosen these two outside ones up, tighten those lines up, and then tighten it back down. And you're good to go. Uh, it's really not a complicated system to do. You don't have to be a mechanical engineer to do that. So I like the fact that uh, that you can adjust that. You do have rudder controls on both sides. It's a really simple rudder control with a, a little bit of a rubber tip here. So it's comfortable on the hands. I like a tighter rudder setup, but obviously you do have to kind of adjust that as you go because it can, uh, it can kind of loosen up over time. But uh, that is, in a nutshell, the Hobie Outback. Again, whether it's the greatest selling fishing kayak of all time, that's for everyone else to brag about, honestly. I like it because you've got a really, you have one of the best pedal drives in the industry. I believe that wholeheartedly. And you've also got a good paddling kayak. So you can use this on multiple types of water. And, you know, so with my pro angler, it's a little bit more of a one trick pony. I do a lot of lake fishing. I do some tournament fishing. This one here I love because if I just want to go out on the creek and I want a really capable kayak that's really easy to control, keep in mind, if you take the drive out and you're paddling it, you've still got your rudder. So if you're drifting, that allows you to control that drift. If you really want to anchor down, um, you can kind of maneuver that boat down where you're not paddling it, and it gives you still that hands-free experience there to an extent. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking into buying the Outback, in my opinion, it's one of the best all around kayaks out there. Bar none, no questions asked. Uh, but again, if you got any questions, you have any experience on the Hobie Outback, let us know down in the comments. It can help somebody looking at this video, make that decision. Maybe some of the pros, maybe some of the cons that you've experienced. 
you know, it is a little bit of a heavier kayak. So again, I did a video I'll put up here in the corner. Um, I kind of did the differences between the compass and the Outback and who each one's for. So again, I hope these videos help you out. If you have any questions, let us know down in the comments. I'll get to you as soon as possible, but I get to all my comments there uh, sooner or later, usually sooner. But anyways, thank you so much for watching guys, and we will see you on the next one.